If you've ever been to the Shelburne Museum, then you know it's a museum like no other, best described by one of the curators as a collection of collections. The museum may look the same on the surface with iconic structures like the Ticonderoga, the covered bridge, and an assortment of buildings relocated by founder Electra Havemeyer Webb. But inside the galleries, there's always something new to see. One of the newest exhibits housed in the Beach Gallery is called Lock, Stock, and Barrel, the Terry Tyler Collection of Vermont Firearms. This is a cane gun and it's an underhammer, which is quite unheard of in a cane gun. The one right over here has a full-length telescope on it. No one knows this exhibit of Vermont-made guns better than Terry Tyler, who began his collection back in the 1960s. My wife and I had an agreement where nothing would come out of the checkbook or off the kids' feet in order to finance the guns. So but what I could make nights and weekends, uh, I was uh, I put toward the guns. Over the past half century, the collection has grown to 106 firearms made from 1790 through 1900. The first one I found was an underhammer. I had never even heard of an underhammer. An underhammer, the hammer swings up from underneath and strikes a percussion cap and downrange it goes. Roughly a third of this collection are under hammers. Every gun has a unique story and Terry remembers them all. In fact, visitors can listen to Terry talk about each gun on MP3 players as they stroll through the exhibit. Here are some handguns. This one here, if you ran out of it, uh, if you fired it once, of course it was done, but you could beat a person to death with that barrel with no problem at all. Most of the guns that are in this collection are made by individual gunsmiths in various towns around the state. And a lot of them did it for their neighbors or hunters or farmers or whatever. Some of them are pretty much plain Janes and others are very ornate. To really appreciate the beauty of these guns, Shelburne Museum curator Gene Burks included a three-dimensional display as part of the exhibit. To me, they are works of art because of the craftsmanship that went into them, the design, the thoughtfulness of how the inlay was done, the engraving on the inlay. It was all very carefully planned out to really make a beautiful uh, firearm as well as a functional one. It's so intricate, the inlaying of a different kind of wood. It takes a lot of time and a lot of work, and it shows some of the artistic facets of, of gun making. It very much speaks to the interests of our founder, Electra Havemeyer Webb. She loved big game sport, and she liked hunting of all kinds. So this very much fits into her personal interests. In fact, adjacent to the gun exhibit is the Beach Lodge. A replica of the Webb's Adirondack camp is filled with Boone and Crockett record-setting animals, many of them harvested by Electra herself. The Dorset House is home to one of the best collections of hand-carved wooden decoys in the world. And the Ogden Fleisner Gallery is filled with outdoor scenes painted by this famous artist. For the curator of this collection, the challenge was to design an exhibit that would appeal to gun lovers and novices alike. I would like people to come into this exhibit and experience how beautiful the guns are and I think how engaging the exhibit design is. It's unbelievable. Uh, as a matter of fact, the fellow that appraised the collection for me in 40 years in the business, he'd never seen a display like this. The thought that went into it. You can see that a lot of the guns from both sides, as opposed to just being nailed on the wall the way I had them at my home. After five decades of gun shows and time researching his purchases, Terry became somewhat of an expert on Vermont-made guns. With the help of his friend Harry Phillips, they co-authored what is considered to be the definitive book on Vermont's early gunsmiths and gun makers. We started doing some real serious research and we thought we'd come up with about 150 makers. And we came up with a total gunsmiths, gun makers, etc., of about 400. 
Nearly three quarters of the guns on display are made by individual gunsmiths. The remaining guns come from a handful of Vermont factories that produced firearms. Working with Terry on this exhibit, I was very surprised to learn how important uh, Windsor, Vermont was to the Industrial Revolution. This is where the replication of parts took place for firearms. This is where mass production took place, and it all had to do with the firearm industry that was growing in Windsor, and I really didn't have any idea how important that industry really was to the history of this state. The Shelburne Museum now owns the guns, and for Terry, this means his collection will always be intact. In fact, he takes so much pride in the display that whenever he's in the area, he can't resist strolling through the exhibit. And as long as he adheres to his wife's rules, there's always a chance that the collection may grow. If I find a gun that was made by somebody that I know was a gunsmith or a gunmaker in Vermont, uh, I'll pick it up.